Welcome to our worship on this beautiful Easter morning. You know, the disciples and the women who went to the tomb on that first Easter were wrong. They thought they were going to find something there uh, that they didn't find. They thought they were going to find Jesus and be able to uh, anoint him with oil, which was their way of preserving, of course. But instead, they found something much, much different. It was a big surprise to them. And we come this morning ourselves as we worship the risen Savior looking for a similar surprise in our worship and in our lives carrying on. And uh, certainly pray that God's blessing is with you as you worship your risen Lord and Savior this morning. I ask you to please turn in your hymnals, if you would, to page 94 as we confess before God our sins and before one another. Page 94. Christ is indeed risen. Let us praise him as we come before him now in confession. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. 
Give us the power of Your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive Your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may kneel or remain standing as we now confess in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you, God, worthy, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. pray. O God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, so that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. The message spread throughout Judea 
beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all people, but to us, who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as the judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify before him. Everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will intone Psalm 118, verses 1 and 2, and 14 through 24. Second reading is from Colossians. <clears throat> if ye have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is in your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook 
and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy, and they ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Christ. Well, I'd like to ask the children to come forward, if they would, for a brief message. You guys can have a seat right here. Got a bunch of stuff here. Kind of looks like somebody didn't take the trash out, right? But that's not what it is exactly. Ah, here we go. Recycling. Recycling, yes. Yes, right. Well, anybody tell me what they think this box held? You know. What? Donuts. But there are no donuts. Look at that. We, sorry. If you're if you're hungry, there's only a few flakes of of frosting, but this box was what held donuts for our breakfast this Easter morning. And it's empty. What is this? Look okay. It's empty. What was going to be in there? Fruit. Fruit, yes. Fruit was going to be in there, but fruit didn't make it to this bowl. This bowl is empty. What about this? What was going to be in there? Milk and orange juice. Okay, milk or orange juice is going to be in here. But it's empty. Empty. This is a little bit different. Anybody know what this is? I what is it? It did. Yeah, very good. It holds paper towels. But it is empty. Empty. Oh, my. Can you get it? Juggle. What is this? Um, it's a jug and it's used free for offering. free will offering, but empty. it's empty. <laughs> I just walked around the church this morning and picked up a bunch of things, but looks like it's just empty. junk, doesn't it now? What do all these things have in common? They're all empty. empty. Yes. And you yeah, remember that in your school tests because they'll ask you, what do all these things have in common? And you've got to figure it out. So, like, these are all things that we could say are empty. Well, you know what? Almost 2,000 years ago, some people went to visit Jesus and they went to visit him because they knew he had been put in the grave and a big stone had been rolled in front of his grave. And what did they find when they got there? In other words, it was empty. empty. Yes, wasn't it? 
There was nothing there, and it was empty. Were they surprised, you think? Yeah. You don't think they were? Who said? You think they were? Oh, well. Well, it depends on whether they really understood what Jesus was saying when he said, I go to prepare a place for you, and when he said, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. If they understood that, then maybe they knew they'd find an empty tomb. But I don't think so on this day. They went out and it was dark and clammy and wet and you couldn't see the sun yet. Maybe just a little bit of brightness in the east. All they saw. And they were going to visit Jesus' grave. You know, people do that. People visit graves. They put up all kinds of flowers sometimes on Easter, sometimes on Memorial Day, visit graves. And these women were going to visit the grave of Jesus just to remember him and also to anoint his body because that would help to preserve his body. Why they wanted to do that, I don't know. What did they find? The grave was... Empty, yes. It was empty because what happened? Anybody remember? Jesus was risen from the dead. God had brought him back to life again. He brought him back to life so that he might be the one who helps us all. First of all, who saves us from our sin and then who gives us salvation so that someday we're going to live with him forever. Don't know what that'll look like. I don't know what that'll feel like. But that is my hope and my faith. And that's what we believe when we talk about Easter and Jesus rising from the dead. Well, I hope you have a nice Easter and I hope that Easter is filled with sunshine and I hope that Easter also is a blessing to you because of Jesus. And I'd like you to hold your hands with me now and we'll have a prayer and thank God for this most special gift. We come before you this day, O oh God, and we are grateful that you so loved the world you gave your only begotten Son. Help us to know and understand what his rising from the dead means to us as we live our lives, help us to feel alive. And as we live our lives, help us to know what it means to love you as Jesus loved us. Amen. Well, thank you for coming up. That was pretty good that I could get up and... Balance this right? <laughs> The young people had their chance to uh, search for Easter eggs before the service, so if they seem a little bit uh, jumpy, it's because inside those Easter eggs, you know, there's a lot of candy. So they've polished most of that off, I assume, by, by now. On that day when Jesus was placed in the ground, death seemed to say no to the world, no to us, and no to God. But God turned that all around so that the no became yes for the world and yes for us and yes for Jesus. The women, as they went out there on that early Easter morning, uh, found that it was cool, perhaps a little bit dewy and wet. Uh, we didn't know whether, they didn't know whether they were going to find soldiers there guarding the grave yet because they had been set there with fear that the disciples would come and steal Jesus' body. And all of a sudden, as they were walking along, well, they felt something like many people feel in California every once in a while, right? It's a little wobbly and it was like an earthquake had taken place because an angel came down and rolled that great big stone off of the cave where Jesus' body had been placed. 
And then the angel sat upon the stone. The ladies, I'm sure, didn't know what to think about it until they got there. They no doubt had a lot of questions on their mind, like, for example, well, what are we going to find? Or will the soldiers even let us close? And uh, uh, maybe above all, the question was, how are we going to roll that stone away? Because they had come in order to anoint Jesus' body to help preserve it with the spices and everything else that uh, people would use in those days to preserve the bodies of their loved ones as long as they could. That question was on their mind and no doubt a lot of other questions. And it seemed like three days before when Jesus was placed in that tomb that it was really, really final. That the world had said no to Jesus, only God could say yes again. And he did. Surprise, ladies. Surprise, disciples. Jesus is risen from the dead. He's no longer among the dead, but he is a part of the living now, not just resuscitated, but resurrected, given life once again to the body that had been put in the grave and in the ground. Well, there were some humbling remarks said to those women who came to the tomb that day, not by Matthew necessarily, but some of the other gospel writers who tell us that one of the angels said, well, why are you looking for uh, the living among the dead? Why are you even here? You know, it probably made them feel pretty, uh, pretty small and tiny, like, well, they should have known. But how were they to know for sure? How would anybody know for sure? The body of Jesus, which had been put in the ground on Good Friday and had been slammed shut with that big stone, was a resounding no by the world, by the devil, by our sinful flesh, that Jesus was no longer going to make it. He had died. But were they surprised? And should we not be surprised again this Easter that still the Christian church talks about the resurrection of Jesus from the dead? And surprised because in our world today we find it increasingly uh, more and more that the world wants to say no to Jesus, that the devil wants us to push him down, to keep him down with that big rock, so that fewer and fewer people would know about the gospel message. And yet, the Christian church, we here today as we gather, say, wait a minute, Jesus is risen, is he not? And the answer, of course, is yes. God said yes to the world. God said yes to the church. And God said yes to his son, Jesus surprise once again that the world would find that Jesus is risen from the dead. Well, now I think that the ladies perhaps began to put things together and the disciples as they gradually learned about the story. Remember now, the, the, the women were the first evangelists of the Christian church. They were the ones telling the disciples and telling others, he's not here, he's risen. We found his grave empty. We were told where he is going. Let's go see him. They were the first evangelists. And now as they came out and away from that tomb, they no doubt started to think. What was it that he said? Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up again? What else did he do and say? Uh, when he raised Lazarus from the dead, remember he said, to Mary and Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Remember also that on that Easter evening, Thomas was not there. He was one that had to be convinced, you might say, uh, more certainly. He had to place his fingers in the scars and touch Jesus' side 
he had to know for sure. And he found out certainly shortly after that that yes, Jesus was risen from the dead. That yes is what God said to his son Jesus. Yes is what God said to all of us, to his church. Yes, Jesus is risen from the dead. Surprise. And it's getting to be increasingly more of a surprise for the world to hear just those words. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. On Good Friday, we listened to the words of the text from the scriptures that said he was taken from, he was taken from the cross and he was buried in a grave that Joseph of Arimathea had provided for him. We celebrated, you might say, if you can talk about celebration, Good Friday by staying with that thought and with those words. We didn't allow Easter or the message of Easter to creep into our services on Good Friday. We realized that what God wants is for us all to walk with Jesus through his suffering and his death as well as be a part of his resurrection. The devil, the world, and our flesh could not win when God said yes. They thought they had. They thought when that big rock was placed over the cave that that was it. God is dead. No longer will we have to uh, listen to this Jesus give us all kinds of teachings and sermons and messages. And in a certain respect, we all had a part in that to say no to God, no to his demands when he tells us, no, don't do that, do this. No to God's word when he tells us, uh, no, this is what I want for you. And we're, we're con- constantly asking God and we're a little bit upset that he doesn't do things the way we want him to do those things. And so we say no to his way of life and living. We say no sometimes to his love, even for people who are rather mild and meek-mannered in this world, people who think that they can never be forgiven because they have created or have committed such sin that nobody would forgive them, not even God. Yet, as often as we, as this world says no, God tells us once again this Easter that it's yes He wants us to hear. Yes is what it is for us who know that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Yes, the grave was empty when the women came there. Yes, it is a surprise to us all because the world can't provide such a thing. Yes, God says. The cross could not hold the body of Jesus, nor could the grave. For God had the final word. Yes. And so we worship a risen Christ. Not a dead one, but a risen one. This is no idle tale, as the disciples first thought when they heard the women speaking. You know uh, how politically correct it is to not say anything about uh, a woman causing an idle tale to be told today. Well, it was... There was no such thing in those days. They thought the women had just too much time on their hands. They thought that they were just spreading rumors when they came to the disciples and said, He is alive. He's no longer in the grave. He's gone before you and you are to meet Him. They thought it was an idle tale. But were they surprised? Were they surprised? It is true. Dear Christians, God says yes to you today. 
O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Couldn't hold Jesus down. Won't hold us down either. For Jesus Christ, God's only begotten Son, has been given to us so that we might have everlasting life. That is why it's so important to hear that great big angel say to us once more today, He's not here. He is risen from the dead. Go and see where He is gone. May you be blessed this Easter season as you consider just the meaning of these words once again told to us by the church, by the Spirit who comes to all of our hearts. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Amen. confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made.
made alive to God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. O God, in Christ's death and resurrection, Your church is reborn. Bless Your people in every nation, Orthodox, Catholic, Protestant, and Pentecostal. Raise us up to witness together to Your undying love for the world. Hear us, O God. O God, Your faithfulness extends to all the earth. On this Easter morn we pray for creation. Make terror and destruction cease and renew all things in the bright dawning of Your love. Hear us, O God. O God, the resurrection of Your Son means life for every nation. Show us that promise and hope. Heal the nation scarred by injustice and greed and give hope to those who are ravaged by violence. Hear us, O God. O God, Your Son healed all who were oppressed. Bless those who heal and show compassion in Jesus' name. Even as we pray for the many among us who are still in need. We think especially of Don Stute who will undergo treatment this coming week and Tom Hartford, who will undergo uh, surgery. We ask you for their sakes and for those who are in need to hear us, O God. O God, in the waters of baptism, you call us by name and raise us to new life in you. Renew us with all faith, hope, and love that we might be Christ's risen body in this world. Hear us, O God. O God, we give thanks for the saints whose lives proclaim the victory of your love. We think especially of Ellie Long, who went to her eternal rest this past week, and with all those like her who have been examples to us beforehand. With them, give us courage to follow our crucified and risen Lord until all things are gathered in His name. Hear us, O God. Into Your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in Your mercy through Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Savior. Amen. Now the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share that peace.
Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring, bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts, that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Indeed, holy, almighty, and merciful God, you are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for his coming into the world, to fulfill for us your holy will, and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup. And when he had supped and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, this cup is the New Testament in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit, to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your church now and forevermore. Let us pray together now the prayer our Lord taught us, our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now taste and see that the Lord is good.
Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you to eternal life. Let us pray. O God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with His favor and grant you His peace. Amen. Amen. the good news.